pull down our images. I'm going to pull down 11.10 and 12.04. Uh, this isn't the permanent directory. It'll get sucked into, uh, into the file system for, for, bar, uh, for Nova or for Glance. Sorry. Uh, okay. Almost done. The next thing we're going to do is import those in to Glance itself. So another thing is you might want to do a Glance index with uh, with and without an image. So you'll see there isn't one when you don't have one populated there. So if it's not there, you're not going to be able to pull from it. And this cloud source that Ubuntu is moving slow tonight. Alright, let's populate in our image here. Don't notice nothing there. This will suck in the image into Glance itself. Now let's do the same for. Notice we've got the index there. Now let's do the same for uh, 1204. And let's learn the type. So that ID right there is what you're going to use to boot me machines from CLI. So uh, we'll go back to that when we're ready to actually spin up a VM instance. Now on to Nova. Let's get the package pulled down. So Nova includes quite a few of the main components. Network will hopefully break off onto its own here shortly with Quantum. Do a little script here so that we can do a restart without having to type that out every time. Go to permissions to be as lazy as possible. bridge into uh, Etsy network interfaces. So the bridge is where uh, Linux bridge where uh, obviously we can define lots of these so if you need multi-tenancy uh, for security uh, different customers whatever uh, you've got the ability to isolate your broadcast domains uh, and also associate those to VLANs to Get some more scale. Okay, bridge control. 
control add bridge br100 bridge control show there's our bridge uh, I'll pull down ETH tool real quick very handy tool to see if you're, you have a link I really wish it would roll by default because if you're fighting drivers on a brand new install it's awfully nice to have if you've got eight interfaces that you have no idea which one is plugged in and which one isn't. Alright, we're going to edit the Nova API file uh, just like it did with Glance. Get our permission set. If we ever get to the bottom. And there it is. Same as everything else we've used. All right. Let's change our permissions. Uh, so I don't know if this is a bug or just something pending to be put in there, but uh, change permissions to the. Uh, of the directory there. Um, so nova.conf, this is uh, very powerful. Each of these flags can totally make or break your deployment. Uh, a lot of the guts of the uh, your systems here. Uh, so it's physically how much you want it. You can, uh, a lot of your allocations of resources are all in here. So fixed range that is your bridge uh, not sure where fixed range came from but uh, I think so floating is the front side so uh, basically that's the mobility component of it is you know it's basically matting and throw whatever you want at it and you can associate any IP to it as long as you've got a route to it definitely some in interesting implications there uh, probably more traffic tromboning than anything else. Max cores, uh, that's how many instances basically you can, well, how many cores you can provision. Uh, I'm going to clear out that, paste in our, or paste, or clear out the default, paste in our new one. So if you do set this up and you can only spin up 16, one virtual CPU. Uh, instances it is max core is your ticket to stressing your machine so Nova manage DB sync Nova manage is basically uh, your interface into the MySQL database without having to do it by hand uh, I expect that to abstract into something uh, a little bit cleaner on some future releases uh, so now we're syncing the database my SQL and when you're successful we got a zero and it'll let you know if it isn't successful let's go ahead and restart Nova again it's almost a nervous tick and let's define our fixed range in Nova manage so this is going to inject that into the database again that's our where our v-necks are going to associate to that bridge. And I say v-necks, uh, virtual necks. Make sure you are attaching that to the right interface or you will cut yourself off or even better, spin up a bridging loop in your data center. I highly recommend uh, if you are testing this in a, anywhere that has critical stuff there. Make sure you turn on some features like uh, BPDU guard and those sort of things on your switch ports so uh, it will at least come close to protecting you by shutting that port down. Now granted there's a couple seconds there where things can still go south before BPDU gets sent but again assuming you're on a spanning tree in your environment uh, which, believe it or not, some people aren't doing these days. All right.
we're booting a node. So we took that image, applied a flavor to it, and waiting on it to build here. Notice it's got an address. And still building. We can see that on the bridge. There's our v-neck defined. Now let's see if we can ping that guy yet. One packet per ARP, and there we go. We're in business. Now, we're going to find the key so we can attach to it. Uh, so it's a portable key. Uh, if anybody's used DC2 before, it's the same idea. And change permissions on the key. Uh, I've still got one hanging here. Yeah, there we go. Now we are in our host. Uh, we've got connectivity. Oh, sudo. And there we go. All right. Here's what our route looks like. Our default route is going to our bridge interface for route out. And there's our address.